We all have our favorite gloves for flying, and mine are fairly thin, have a rubber coating for grip, and offer some warmth and protection at altitude. Problem is, they are not suitable for below zero, so I have been on the hunt for some heated gloves. Everything I have seen is pretty thick, and I wonder how easy it would be to wear them while flying. Ones approved for flying are extremely expensive, and if I don't like them, then it's 400 bucks out the window. Then I noticed I have some of this thin stainless beading wire and checked out what might be the resistance of a meter, so it could be used as a heating element. The actual resistance wasn't exactly as in the charts, so I suspect it's a less pure stainless than 316. Nonetheless, diving into two lanes of 50 centimeters is just enough to sew through a glove and still get over two watts of heating power. So off I went designing a 3D printed case that can be sewn into an inner liner. I see most heater gloves have a battery pocket, but I didn't want plugs and wires, which are always a failure point. Of course, this is just my preference. Some people DIY gloves with carbon fiber tape, but I have none. Plus, the voltage needs to be higher, and I only have two of these 3.7 volt LiPo batteries left. Once the boxes are cleaned out, the parts can go in. As you saw in the schematic, it's nothing complicated, but the LiPo chargers will eventually be in their own little box. I've ordered the 5 volt chargers to use with a USB source already. I'm just charging, for now, with my shop variable power supply. A single pole toggle fits right in. then a 3.5 millimeter mono plug for the charger input. Here's the 1000 milliamp hour battery, which should run the glove for about an hour. This was later verified at about an hour and 20 minutes. To connect the stainless wire to the copper ones, I'm using a time-tested method of screwing the wire to a simple two bus PC board, which then can be soldered to. I've done similar to this in a saltwater environment and it holds up well as long as coated with grease after. Much better than just twisting the wires together, right? So, in place. The wire length is crucial. Rather than cut the wire, just bending and marking at the halfway point will suffice. Keeping the wire on the sewing needle was done by twisting it on, then a quick heat with a lighter to melt the vinyl coating. It was actually hard to get it off after. Here I am sewing the multi-strand wire through, but ended up re-sewing it with shorter stitches later and away from the knuckles, which is really important. It's a learning process. So now for a test of the liner. Hey, it's warming up. Originally I was going to sew the liner, which is just a knitted glove from Wally World, directly into my rubber tipped glove, but decided not to. This way they can be used in any gloves, as I don't only fly, right? So after the cases together, it's time to sew it into the glove. 
This proved to be a bit trickier than I had expected because the fat needle barely fit through the 3D printed holes in the case, and they're all pointed almost straight up. I marked where the edge should be when stretched over my hand, then sewed up to that. As predicted, the bright flashing LED is visible through the orange glove, even outside. The switch is easy to feel through the material, so that's good. Here's a heat reading from unheated and heated gloves. Now for a true test. I'm wearing the heated glove on my left hand while hiking up a mountain in below zero weather. It did keep my fingers from tingling on the left hand after about a half an hour, so I would say probably this works. There it is, still going. When you turn it off, you can really feel the difference. It's, uh, it starts to cool off right away. You can feel the cold. Then you turn it on, and it takes, I don't know, a couple seconds, maybe three seconds, and it starts warming up. I can feel it all in here already. So, yeah, I think it's good. This one has nothing on it, and uh, my fingers are starting to get cold. Now, this one, they feel, I mean, I can feel the cold on the tips, but uh, it's actually, uh, my hand's quite comfortable. So I'd say this is a good one. <laughs> I'm going to do this other glove up next. I was going to wait and then, you know, why do it, do a bad thing twice. Anyway, so there it is. This is good. Thanks for watching. 